the rest is just padding. Okay, so for this kit, we essentially have four packages. We have the DSP amplifier, the associated wiring for that unit. Then we have the subwoofer and associated wiring kit with that. And then the instructions. So really that's it. Now let's uh, walk through the installation. Okay, so the first step is to remove this bottom bezel. Okay, so we got that off. You want to unclip the wires on the back. Now we want to disconnect the negative from the battery cable. So I'm going to go under the hood and do that. Okay, so it's a 10 millimeter. I'm going to disconnect this. Now we got to remove this pocket here. Now we're going to remove the radio bezel. And I do recommend getting a pry kit. You really don't want to use a screwdriver. Okay, so we're going to remove the four screws that hold the AC controls. And now we remove the two screws for the radio face. Okay, so we got the radio face out. And so the HVAC controls have two pins holding it in, so it's a little bit tight. You can pull on that. All right, and so now you're gonna remove the two screws that hold the display screen. The uh, screen will pop out. Disconnect the wiring. This I'm gonna leave up here so it doesn't get damaged. And now we got four screws holding the radio unit in place. We can disconnect all the wiring here. Takes a little bit of effort. There's quite a few connections on that. Okay, so we're done in here for right now. We're gonna move to the driver's side uh, kick panel here. just comes out. Okay so the next step is they want you to move the coolant reservoir out of the way. There's a little metal clip here so I'm just going to use a flathead screwdriver to kind of pry it up so you can see it there. Now the reservoir will slide up and you can just kind of tuck it to the side. You don't want to disconnect any of the hoses. We're just getting it out of the way. So this is really hard to show you because it's dark and it's way in the back here but we basically moved the coolant reservoir to get to the factory grommet here okay so we've cut a little hole in the grommet I had a little nipple underneath the factory wiring harness and uh, I was able to just cut that and I should be able to get both my wires in okay so we got our two wires going through okay so now we're gonna hook up the power wire here uh, so you gotta open this fuse cover can be a little tricky and we're hooking to the 250 amp accessory it's the uh, first one and you can confirm which one it is it's a 13 millimeter socket okay so we got the wires connected you can close the uh, fuse panel up and I just want to make sure the wires are out of the way and they're not rubbing on anything metal if you have some zip ties throw them in you want to make sure that you can access the uh, fuses now we can put this uh, coolant reservoir back in. Okay, so now we have to install this connector on here. The order of the three pins doesn't matter, but it does only go in one way and you'll hear it click and it's a nice firm click. Okay, now the single pin, there's a block in one of them, so obviously you can't put it in there. And there's like a rubber grommet and the wire goes in there and again it locks in. So we got these two connectors on. So the next step is to run the wiring harness um, from the radio 
down to this kick panel here. So I won't be able to show you too much of that, but the only thing I wanted to point out is these two big fat connectors go up at the radio. Okay, so we're back in the car, and this was a little easier than I thought to run. There's uh, some openings, I was able to get it through. But uh, now we can reconnect the radio. Okay, so we got the radio interface, the screen, and the HVAC controls back in. I'm not gonna put the uh, bezels on. We're gonna do a test once it's all hooked up. Uh, so the next thing we're gonna be doing is working under the steering column, and we're gonna connect the amplifier. Okay, so I'm gonna attempt to show you where the amp is installed under the dash. It's very hard because it's so dark. And now, that's the other screw right there. So I'll take you in again. There's the brake pedal. Follow it up. There's the first bolt. And there's the second bolt. Okay, now it's time to hook the amplifier up with the harnesses, so can't show you much, but you can watch me struggle. I'm really thinking it's going to be easier to pull the amp down, put the wire in, and then mount the amp up. Instructions don't stay to do that, but it's tight. So that's probably what I'm going to do. Next step is to remove the seat. And so you just pull straight up on the front edge. Okay, so again, the rear seat can just come out. The next step is to remove the carpet. Next step is to remove this plastic piece. That'll just pop out. Next step is the driver's side carpet. And now we can run the subwoofer cable. Okay, so we got the wire running there, under the center pillar, and then over to here. There's a ground lug here. That's where we're gonna connect our two grounds. We got one from the subwoofer, and then one from the radio. And so I am very glad that I didn't fully install the radio because this two pin needs to go behind the radio to the harness. Uh, so we're going to have to take apart the dash and connect this wire from the subwoofer. And so the next step is to drill out this bracket and this bracket using a 3 8 drill bit. Okay, so we got those drilled out to 3 8 And we're going to install these speed clips. Now we can re reinstall the carpet. Alright, next we can install the carpet, and we can connect the trim piece here. Now we're ready to install the subwoofer. So there you can see it there. I mean, it doesn't have much play, and it remains kind of flush. I'm happy with that. Okay, so I looked over everything and everything's connected properly. So now we can install the fuses. The yellow is the subwoofer, so that's taking a 25 amp fuse. And the black one is a, the radio amplifier, and that's a 15 amp fuse. Now we're ready to connect the negative on the battery. Now we can test the unit. So it's working. We're good. 